All right, thank you, Bree. Bob Richards, our movie critic, is in-house this morning. And let's talk about this weekend's movies. When you've got a, another sequel, and it's also one that has a uh, cult following, it's going to be a pretty good weekend in movies. It, it was good, but it wasn't quite as good as, as everybody thought it was going to be. Some might call its performance less than stellar, as Star Trek Into Darkness fell below expectations at the box office. The film was expected to make $100 million, but could only muster $70.6 million, which was $5 million less than its predecessor, but still enough to dethrone Iron Man 3 from its perch atop the box office chart. Don't feel too bad for Iron Man, though. It crossed the $300 million mark to domestically and has made over one billion worldwide it now stands as the ninth biggest film in history. Third place belonged to The Great Gatsby which made 23.4 million. There are some problems with Star Trek Into Darkness. J.J. Abrams trademark is the lens flare. Okay once or twice but not in every scene. Really? And in 3D, it's especially annoying. It seems to poke us in the eye every time. Then there are some lapses in logic and gaping plot holes, and that's a shame since this is based on one of the smartest sci-fi series ever, but there's a lot that's good, too. I genuinely like the current cast. They seem to have grown into a cohesive unit. The film has real moments of humor, and there is near constant sweaty palm action. It's never boring, but I was disappointed in how it borrows too many moments from prior films. Was that homage or laziness? Honestly, it felt more lazy. Still, the film was very good. Four stars out of five. Renoir, now at the flicks, looks as beautiful as the paintings it's about. Sumptuous photography makes up for a script that sometimes drags. The film portrays the artist at the end of his life who finds a new model who inspires him to paint some of his greatest works. Ample displays of skin kept the elderly artist painting and provide interludes of interest when the film tests our attention. Three and a half stars out of five. I wasn't enamored with the reluctant fundamentalist, also now at the flicks. Riz Ahmed is magnetic and in full command of the screen, while Kiefer Sutherland and Lee Schreiber are both admirable in their roles. But Kate Hudson is woefully miscast and seems like she's aged decades since we last saw her. Her attempts at girlishness seem tired and half-hearted. The script, however, is the weak link here. The lead character makes huge mental shifts, but we're given little reason for them. The entire film's structure is skilllessly done to the point where, at the conclusion, we don't care about anyone or anything in it. It was as emotionally gripping as mayonnaise, as satisfying as lukewarm water, and as forgettable as... Uh, I, I forgot. Two and a half stars out of five. For my reviews, a look at this week's DVD and Blu-ray releases and more, head over to my website, BobRichardsMovieReviews.com, or link to it at IdahoOnYourSide.com. I love how when you talked about J.J. Abrams' lens flares, we saw about three or four of them in quick succession. <laughs> it's during, constant. <laughs> during it oh, your review right there. Now, one or two, I think, is cool. It's, it's very artistic, yes. but like you said, it can be constantly. overdone. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Bob. Well, we'll be right back after this with a final look at the commute and the forecast. Don't go away.